The nine-banded armadillo is a medium-sized mammal, usually around 65 centimeters and weighing 9.9 .9 pounds or 4.5 kilograms. They populate many areas in South America and the southern region of North America. The unique part about the armadillo is that they are the only remaining mammal that has a protective shell, or carapace, normally only found on arthropods. In fact, the word armadillo in Spanish means little armored one. The nine-banded armadillo has the widest distribution out of all the different types of armadillos. Armadillos, including the nine-banded armadillo, are very good diggers and can burrow their way to safety if they th feel threatened. They can also roll up so that only their carapace shows. The specific habitat that nine-banded armadillos prefer is forest land, which includes rainforest in South America. They tend to stay by water and are fairly good swimmers. They can hold their breath for a significant amount of time, around six minutes, which also comes in handy when they are burrowing into soil. They are also insectivores, but are known to sometimes eat plant material and some fruits. The nine-banded armadillo belongs to the Eukarya domain, the Animalia kingdom, the Chordata phylum, the Mammalia class, the Kingulata order, the Dasypodidae family, genus Dasypus, and our species Novemcinctus. The first important evolutionary aspect of the nine-banded armadillo is natural selection. Xenothrans, which is the superorder that armadillos belong to, used to be made up of very large animals like pampatheres and glybdodonts, but they had many predators inside of South America that were all very fast, like ancient felines. Because of this, the smaller of these individuals were naturally selected because they could escape quicker from their predators and could dig faster, hiding their entire body. Another example of natural selection in the nine-banded armadillo are their teeth. Unlike many mammals, the nine-banded armadillo has no sharp teeth. All they have are a few peg-shaped molars. This is because they eat almost entirely insects, so it is actually a waste of energy for the armadillo to grow sharp teeth and have them take up unnecessary space in their mouth. The ones uh, with only a few molar teeth are a lot more efficient at getting insects and are using less energy to get their needed food for the day. Another evolutionary aspect of the nine-banded armadillo is gene flow, because during the tertiary period, which was around 66 million to 2.6 million years ago, South America and North America were completely isolated, and so the fossil armadillos at the time diversified and evolved only in South America. But then the land bridge was created between the continents, and some species of armadillos moved across. This allowed them to evolve in their own way in North America and under different con uh, conditions allowing for species like the nine-banded armadillo to arise because they are actually naturally more resistant to colder temperatures compared to other species of armadillo. A third evolutionary feature of the nine-banded armadillo is adaptation. Unlike many of the other species of armadillos, the nine-banded armadillo can survive in cooler temperatures and climates with a prominent winter and summer cycle and are able to successfully reproduce and have surviving offspring. This is partly due to a reproductive adaptation called polyembryony. When nine-banded armadillos mate and fertilization occurs, a blastocyst will form, but development of this blastocyst will be delayed for a few months. Typically, mating season is, is in July, and the blastocyst will only re really start to develop in November. During this delay, four different embryos are formed attached to the same placenta, creating identical quadruplets that will only be born in late March to early May, so that they may live the first part of their life outside of the cold winter, giving them as much time as possible to adjust and learn how to survive on their own before the winter starts up again. The fourth evolutionary aspect of the nine-banded armadillo and armadillos altogether are fossil records of them. When Darwin made his way to South America to study the natural history of the continent, his team brought back the fossils of glyptodonts, an ancient four-meter and two-ton animal from South America, and he realized how similar, similar they were to the modern-day armadillo and sloths, which are also part of the Xenothran superorder. The glyptodonts and modern armadillos both had similar body structure and ha both had a carapace. The similarity between the fossilized and the present-day animals led to the development of the law of succession, when a single ancestral being gives rise to a number of similar but distinct species, or in other words, homologous succession. The final distinctive evolutionary aspect of the nine-banded armadillo is a vestigial structure. Vestigial structures are in parts of an organism that have no apparent function, 
and is a reduced version of a structure that was functional in the organism's ancestors. The vestigial structure in the nine-banded armadillo is its fifth finger, which is present as a single, tiny, grain-shaped phalanx. Many xenothrans have at least one vestigial finger, although they are often different in each one. For example, the nine-banded armadillo, which I just explained, is actually one of the only ones that only has its fifth finger be vestigial. The reason that it is vestigial is because it used to be important to ancient xenothrans because it helped them grab things more easily, like prey. But now that the nine-banded armadillo has become a very prominent digger and only forges for its food, this fifth finger has become useless to it, as it does not need to grab and hold things anymore, like prey. Overall, the evolutionary history of the nine-banded armadillo is very long and broad, but it can be narrowed down when applying evolutionary techniques to it. The likely history of the nine-banded armadillo was that it was a result of ancient armadillos traveling to North America and making their homes there. They then were naturally selected to become smaller and have teeth that favored their insect diet, as they became too small to eat any bigger organisms. Also, as they became smaller, they became better diggers and relied on hiding from their prey using this ability and also rolling up into a ball to reveal only their carapace. The reason they are able to survive a different climate compared to the other armadillos is because of an adaptation called polyembryony. This is proved uh, through all the evolutionary aspects that I explained and how they influence the nine-banded armadillo.